All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you again one of the coolest features of OBS is the NewTek NDI integration. Well, now I want to show you how to use NDI cameras with OBS. Let's take a look. So, first of all, one of the coolest things here, and you can actually see that this camera right here, oh, we got to, can you switch to that, that shot, Mike? This camera that we're using right here is an NDI camera. You can see the logo right there. This camera right here is also an NDI camera. Look at that. Pretty cool. Mike's going to show some close-ups from maybe another camera or something. But anyway, um, we've got multiple NDI cameras in this studio, and we can pull them in to our video production system with just a single Ethernet cable plugged into them directly into OBS. And it's so super cool and easy to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to bring in NDI cameras directly into your OBS. And then I'm going to actually punch in a really great video that we've already produced about it that's going to show you guys how it all works. So first of all, the most important thing to know is that all that's connected to my computer right now is one Ethernet cable. So over one gigabit Ethernet cable, I can have like 20 NDI HX cameras in 1080p, 60 frames per second, low latency, high definition, pulled directly into my OBS studio. So no more need for capture cards. We can pull these in directly. So let's take a look at OBS, and I want to show you how this works. It's so simple. Now, I'm assuming that you've already uh, installed the NDI plugin for OBS. Go to OBS's uh, community forum, search for OBS-NDI, and uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Palakis, the handle of Palakis, that has um, set up NDI. Now, NDI works with NDI in and NDI out. We don't really need to check out the NDI output. We just need NDI input. In fact, I've actually got an NDI input right here, which is the Telestrator. So I've already got that one. Don't need it, though. So I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to show you all these NDI sources. Now, technically, all of these cameras right here are all NDI cameras. So this one here is an NDI source. This one here is an NDI source. And you can see just how low the latency is. There's no pixelation. It's super smooth. I can still use it with everything. And I don't have it in the low bandwidth mode because I have our network set up here for NDI. And there's there's I, it works super smooth. It's a gigabit network made by Ubiquity. I can link to the network setup below so you guys can learn about how our network is set up. But what we're going to do is we're going to click NDI source and our camera is going to pop right up. So we go ahead and click NDI. I'm going to call this NDI camera. Click OK. There we go there. And let's go ahead and add a 20x SDI PTZ Optics camera. Boom, there it is. So that is an NDI camera pulled directly in. Now, one of the things I want to show you, it takes a second to kind of lock in, but once you've got it, you've got low latency. I can now, one of the things that's really, really cool that I haven't really shown too many people about this yet is the ability, I can now control this camera as well with our OBS plugin. And I can control it with my Xbox controller, and I can control it with hotkeys. That's going to be for another video, but I just wanted to show you guys quickly how to add NDI cameras into OBS, and then you'll be able to use a joystick controller to control the cameras as well with OBS. And so from that, let's go ahead and take a look at a great PTZ Optics produced video about NDI cameras. It'll tell you about the bandwidth of NDI cameras and really everything you need to know about how to set up NDI cameras with OBS. When you first receive your PTZ Optics NDI high efficiency enabled camera, the first thing you should do is read the included manual. A portion of this manual is dedicated to the NDI HX setup which you should pay specific attention to on page 45. Inside your box, you will find your camera, the manual, the power supply, a remote control, two AAA batteries, and a serial connection cable used for joystick controllers. Once you've read the manual, it is helpful to select the video resolution and frame rate you'd like to use with your camera. The camera's resolution is set by a yellow dial on the back of the interface board of the camera. 
you can reference the available frame rates in your manual or on a table printed on the bottom of your camera. Note, the default setting is zero, which is 1080p at 60 frames per second. This is ideal for sports, but you may want to consider setting the dial to six for 1080p 30 for the classic natural video look depending on your application. Another note, keep in mind the camera does have a dial priority setting inside the IP interface. This camera supports 50 Hz, which is PAL, and 60 Hz, which is NTSC. The dial priority rotary dial on the back of the camera supports these formats. 60 Hz is used in North America, and 50 Hz is generally used in Europe. Once you have set your resolution dial, you can turn your PTZ Optics camera on. If your network switch provides PoE, power over Ethernet, you will not need to use this included power supply. Cameras support PoE 802.3 AF. The camera via PoE consumes between 12 to 13 watts, but at longer cable runs, you can require up to 15 watts to accommodate for voltage drop. When you first getting set up, it is helpful to connect your camera to an HDMI monitor. You can also use the SDI output to view video from your camera. Once your camera is powered on and connected to the network, you should determine whether you will use a dynamic or a static IP address. We highly suggest assigning your camera a static IP address for long-term use. A dynamic IP address can change periodically, making it difficult to manage in the long term. We suggest setting up a static IP address with sequential IP addresses for tidy management of multiple cameras. Note that most applications that use NDI will require your camera and the receiving computer or device to be on the same subnet of the LAN. For example, 192.168.1.123 and 192.168.1.111 belong to the same subnet. 192.168.1.123 and 192.168.0.125 do not. Let's put the included AAA batteries inside your remote control and take a look at the features. You can pan, tilt, and zoom your camera using the up, down, left, right arrow keys on your remote. You can also set a specific PTZ preset by clicking the preset button and then entering the number you'd like to save in that preset. You can try moving the camera and calling a preset quickly to test out the camera's movements and operation. If you find the default camera preset movements too fast, you can always change change the speed settings in the camera menu. You can access the OSD menu, which stands for on-screen display, for this camera by pressing the menu button. This is where you can navigate into advanced features such as iris, shutter speed, gain, color balance, contrast, luminance, and even change the camera movement speeds just using the arrow keys and the enter button. Here's a tip. You can access the OSD menu remotely using the camera's IP address in any web browser or using the IP joystick. Here's another tip. You can control up to four cameras with a single IR remote control. Use the shortcut star, pound, and the corresponding F1 through F4 buttons to set up unique camera IDs on your IR remote. For example, hit star, pound, F2, and that will set your camera ID to 2 on your IR remote. You can use DHCP to dynamically assign an IP address for your camera. This is a great way to temporarily assign an IP address to your camera. You can set up your camera with DHCP quickly by using the IR remote and entering pound star 4. Once your camera reboots, you can use the IR remote to locate the dynamic IP address that has been set on your camera by pressing star pound 4. You can assign a static IP address to your NDI HX camera by using our Windows only IP address settings tool or on any Mac or PC computer using a web browser. Let's use the web browser. Enter the IP address of your camera into your web browser and press enter. When prompted, enter the default username and password, which is admin admin. You may want to consider changing this default password in the admin ad area. Navigate to the network tab and choose fixed IP address from the very top drop down menu. You can now enter the static IP address you wish the camera to use and press apply. Once you do this, you can reboot your camera by clicking the system tab and clicking reboot. Now that your camera has a static IP address, it's time to configure your NDI settings. By default, your NDI HX camera has two or three preset settings, depending on your camera model, that you can choose from for a simple NDI setup. You can choose from high, medium, or low, and then click the apply button and reboot your camera. 
camera. You should note that NDI stands for Network Device Interface, and NDI-HX stands for High Efficiency Network Device Interface. NDI features a combination of high quality video and low latency transmission that is ideal for live video production and video conferencing applications. NDI-HX is ideal for broadcast professionals adding NDI sources to an existing network that has not originally been designed for video production. Here are some examples of networks that are ideal for NDI-HX sources. Houses of worship, corporate networks, educational facilities, small businesses, healthcare institutions, and any network not dedicated to NDI, which could include event streaming systems. NDI HX video sources are generally one-tenth of the bandwidth of full NDI sources. Let's take a look at a bandwidth comparison chart. NDI HX set at low, which is generally 720p at 60 frames a second, will use 6 megabits per second. NDI HX set to medium, which is generally 1080p at 30 frames a second, will have a bandwidth of 8 megabits per second. NDIHX set to high, which is used for 1080p at 60 frames a second, will consume 12 megabits per second. The equivalent 1080p at 60 frames a second full NDI stream can have a nominal range of 125 to 200 megabits per second. Let's take a look at an example network set up with 10 NDI sources using the recommended 25% headroom. First, we have an NDI scan converter application running on a laptop, which is sending PowerPoint slides into a larger vMix video production system. This will require 125 megabits per second. Let's say we have two NDI monitors for camera operators. This will take us up to 125 megabits per second each at 375 megabits total. Let's say we have a vMix system that's also outputting a 1080p 60 frame per second NDI source that will take us to 500 megabits per second. Let's say we have a confidence monitor for our talent that will take us up another 125 megabits per second to 625. And let's say we have five PTZ optics cameras that are using the NDI HX high mode that will add another 60 megabits per second, taking us to a total of 685. Our suggested headroom by Newtech is 25% on a gigabit switch that accounts for 250 megabits, which takes us to a total of 935 megabits per second, allowing us to add potentially one or two more NDI HX cameras. But you can see here that you can quickly use up a gigabit network switch with multiple NDI video sources. Network bandwidth headroom recommendations can vary widely from 30 to 60%, depending on what your network is utilized for. Please consult your network administrator before adding NDI sources to your local area network. It's now time to make sure you have the latest NDI tools installed on your computer. The latest drivers can be downloaded here, www.newtech.com slash NDIHX slash products. Once you've downloaded and installed the latest NDI tool pack, you should reboot your computer. With the latest NDI tool pack installed, it's time to pull up your video feed and do some final testing. You can open up the NDI Studio Monitor application and right click anywhere in the window to select from your available NDI sources. Select your camera and notice that you will have the ability to pan, tilt, and zoom. Your camera is now set up and working on your network. Remember, each computer you want to use NDI HX sources with will require the latest NDI tool package to be installed. Now that your camera is all set up, consider downloading the free PTZ camera applications available at ptzoptics.com slash apps. You can quickly tweak your camera settings and color match multiple cameras with advanced settings. The new apps available for both Mac and PC. Hey guys, thanks for so much for taking the time to watch this video. That's how you can set up OBS with NDI camera sources. Super cool stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.